Well, we begin today with what else but our ongoing national crisis. Now, less than one week, folks, in fact, five days, seven hours and counting. That's how much time is left until the end of the world scary August 2nd apocalyptic deadline, which, by the way, we've already moved three times. And so, despite the fact that raising this arbitrary debt ceiling is something that this country has done like clockwork, in fact, more than 100 times since 1940, our two political parties still seem to not to be able to reach any sort of deal. So, what exactly is the end game here? I mean, how is this crisis actually going to affect ordinary Americans? And is it even a crisis or just a political show? Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to follow the money when it comes to the truth about economic issues. So let's hear from someone who has boatloads and boatloads of it. Jim Rogers is the co-founder of the Quantum Fund. He's also the author of A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. Now, earlier, I had a chance to chat with Jim about all the crazy frenzy here in Washington. Take a look at what he had to say. Lucy, may I suggest you stop watching? I know you have to report something because you're on TV, but it's a, it's a charade. It's a, spam, it's a scam. They're not going to do anything serious. They're going to announce something either the day before, the day of, or the day after, and they're going to say everything is okay, but then six months from now, a year from now, America's going to be in worse shape than it is now. They're going to continue to spend and drive us all deeper into debt. We've been doing this for 40 years. It's not going to go anywhere. Now, Jim, to uh, just bolster your point, in fact, we saw uh, White House officials on Thursday evening calling all the top bankers, essentially saying, guys, don't worry, there's not going to be an actual default, even if the debt cap, cap isn't raised. So that begs the question, what's the point? What's the point of this charade? What's the point of, uh, you know, worrying people? I mean, I'm glad I got something to cover here as a journalist, but come on. They're trying to get publicity for themselves. They're posturing. That's what politicians do. Lucy, the studies show that the people who are good politicians are the people who are good at playground when they were in grammar school. And these guys are at playground yet again, only it's with our money and it's driving America deeper into debt. America's the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. It's just getting worse. Lucy, we had something called the Grace Commission 25 or 30 years ago that said we, we got to stop this. And then they passed a law, Congress, the Graham Rudman law, saying we're no more deficit spending. Well, they've all forgotten that and ignore that. We've been doing this annually for decades. Ignore them. Well, it, it seems like not only do they have the behavior of toddlers, but they certainly seem to have the memory of toddlers. But, Jim, uh, to go back to something you said earlier, I mean, when you say that uh, even if we do reach this deal, everything looks great for, for a little while, but six months to a year gets worse, what do you mean when you say it gets worse? I mean, it, it's easy to talk about these abstract terms, but if you look at the facts, 14.1 million Americans unemployed, over half of all American families live from paycheck to pay paycheck, more than 44 million are in food stamps. I mean, what's that going to look like for those of us who can't move to Singapore? We're all going to continue to get deeper and deeper into debt. Lucy, they've been spending a lot of money, and the people who've been receiving that money think they're better off, and they probably are. They've got more money in their pocket. But the overall situation, Lucy, is getting more and more serious. America's now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. This cannot go on forever. Yes, eventually the creditors are going to say, listen, no more. That's the end of the line. You think the problems are bad now. You wait till we don't have any more credit. You wait till the, the currency is collapsing. You wait till interest rates are going through the roof and inflation is going through the roof. It's not going to be a pretty picture. There's going to be social unrest. It's going to be a mess. But we better deal with it. The sooner we deal with it, the better. If we deal with it now or last year or even this year, we might have a hope after some periods of, of very, very painful periods. Then we can start over. But uh, as you said, Jim, you've been around a long time, and they've been talking about this a long time, and uh, they're not going to take the massive kinds of cuts that they need to take to the spending in order to get the situation under the control. So, I mean, what's the future going to look like? Are we going to go back to agrarian economy? I mean, you know, I thought I'd be keep teaching my kids uh, science and Chinese. Is it going to be firewood and, and, and field plowing? Well, I'm glad you've been attentive, Lucy, because I'm, unfortunately it's going to be that way. In 1918, the U.K. was the richest, most powerful country in the world. Within three decades, they were bankrupt and they were bailed out by the, by the IMF. It was not a pretty sight in the U.K. Uh, three generations later. We've had a lost decade in America because we refused to deal with reality. Prepare yourself for another lost decade or more, depending on how bad things get down there.
Now, Jim, I want to ask you a, a little more personal question. I know you've talked about this a while. Uh, you know, in some ways, you're sort of the, the all American golden boy. You know, you were born next door to us here in Maryland, uh, bred in Alabama. <coughs> what the heck are you doing uh, all the way in Singapore? Are, are, are things that bad here in the U.S.? Well, no, I'm still an American citizen. I'm an American voter. I'm an American taxpayer. But, Lucy, uh, the 21st century is going to be the century of Asia, whether we like it or not. I've got two little children. I want them to grow up speaking Mandarin, and I want them to know Asia. I think the best skills that I can give them for their lifetimes is Mandarin and Asia. So, I mean, parents do a lot of things for their children. Some people move near sports camps or near other schools. We moved here so our children can, can grow up speaking Mandarin and knowing Asia. But let me ask you, I mean, if you th say that things are so bad here and our politicians certainly can't seem to get their act together, why not renounce your citizenship? Why not wash your hands of this whole uh, economic mess and move on? Well, I, I haven't done that. I mean, I will go and consider that if that's, what, <laughs> if that's your suggestion, but uh, I, I don't see doing that anytime soon. Well, so then are things maybe not that bad? Do we have a chance of uh, turning this whole mess around? But I don't see any chance of our turning it around. We will have rallies certainly along the way, but uh, unfortunately, I don't. See, countries that have gotten themselves into this situation, Lucy, never do anything until there's a crisis or a semi-crisis. When we have our crisis or our semi-crisis, and I hope it's years away, but it's probably not, then maybe we will start taking some serious action, or the market will force us. To take serious so this action. isn't this what we're seeing right now. That's not a crisis. 14.1 million unemployed, uh, 44 million on food stamps. That's not that's not even the tip of the iceberg. Lucy, the the New York the, the stock exchange, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is near its all time high. What kind of crisis is that when the financial markets are all fat and happy and most people are well off? I mean, yes, there are people that are that are despondent and suffering right now. But that's not a crisis. Wait till there's a crisis. Look around the world. Look at what happened in Iceland. Look at some of the other serious crises we've had in the past three or four years. Then you'll understand what the word crisis means. All right. And then I, I want to get a little more personal and ask you about uh, an old buddy of yours, uh, someone you used to work for by the name of uh, George Soros, with whom you, of course, co-founded the uh, Quantum Fund with. Now, he's getting out of the whole hedge fund business. Uh, what do you make of it? I didn't even know about it. I mean, I, I haven't been into Quantum Fund for over 30 years. You might as well ask me about my first wife, Lucy, or, or where I went to college or something. As this is all far, far away in my life. Oh, well, I'm surprised to hear that. Uh, so you don't think it signifies anything if uh, the man most, most famous for uh, hedge funds gets out of the business? I, I just don't know anything about it. I mean, you have to ask him. <laughs> I, I know nothing about it. You're telling me something I don't even know. All right, all right, Jim. Well, uh, look, I, I'm not a rich lady, but uh, let's just say I win the lotto tomorrow. Uh, what's your investment advice for me? What should I, uh, anything here in this country that's uh, wor worth investing for me? Uh, I would not invest in anything, Lucy, unless you know what you're doing. I happen to the things I own in the U.S. I own the U.S. dollar at the moment. I own commodities in the U.S. But mainly, don't listen to me. Don't listen to people on TV. Listen to yourself. Well, I, 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 wouldn't, you I wouldn't know what to do if I listened to you, because, Jim, you're, you're, you're the biggest pessimist when it comes to the dollar. What are you doing uh, owning the dollar there? I'm, 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 you're right. I'm one of the most pessimistic people around about the dollar. But everybody's pessimistic on the dollar, Lucy, which is why I own it. I've been investing long enough to know that when everybody's on one side of the boat, you ought to go to the other side of the boat for a while. So I own the U.S. dollar. Who knows if I'm right? I make plenty of mistakes. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go, uh, but last question there. August 2nd passes if there's no deal. Should we all uh, try to find the, the, the cheapest ticket over to the Bahamas and get the heck out of this country, or are we going to be okay? Ignore it. Ignore it. Well, even if they default, quote, default on August 2nd, August 3rd, August 4th, they're going to be back playing the same old games. Go to the playground and play with these guys if that's what you need to do. I know you have to report it, as I said before, but I'm paying no attention. It has no effect on my investment uh, decisions. The market looks ahead to six months or a year from now. The market doesn't really care what happens in August. It's looking ahead.